uh, homeopathic yeah. kind of things. Yeah. yeah, it's a homeopathic thing. It's it's definitely a, an additive thing without worrying about medicine or anything right. pharmaceutical. It um I I did an IV a vitamin IV. We are uh we are jumping on live right now. Just wanted to let you know this thing jumped on a little Sweet. earlier than anticipated, okay. but. If everybody is here, I think everybody's hopping on right now. Cool. Do you see us yet, everybody, in the live chat? I think so. Great. This did it to us once before uh, last year where we're like, all right, let's just connect this. And YouTube's like, nah, you're going live right now. So <laughs> Yeah, I remember that. You have no say in the matter. <laughs> yeah. So let's say hello to everybody in the live chat as they are filing in. They're just leaving the uh john billingsley uh discussion which was great to have john billingsley hello to yep there oh. we are hello to matt boardman melissa longo galenda faith howell i bet bet we might see faith howell a little <laughs> later too chris gavin steve case just rosie dr Anne marie siegel galenda peter h chason lucia out in brazil uh jr pool Kale Bliss, what's up, DJ Kitty Cat, who sponsored this episode. When we hit record, we'll mention that. Uh, nice. Joel, what's up, TJ Jackson Bay out in Missouri. Uh, hey. SC Nurse Robert Kaiser out in Austria. Wow, you guys want to see these guys? Yeah, mm. it's a long way away. I'd like a little pastry and a little coffee right now. <laughs> Little little mm. little little skiing maybe little Look, little ski uh, run. I had some the best Venus schnitzel in Austria. Oh, it yeah. was so delicious. I ate it every day. I had to go back to the same spot. Oh my god, <laughs> so that's good. good. Good food there. Yeah. Ooh, St says howdy from Sydney, Australia. Oh, oh wow. good day, good day, mate. <laughs> uh carrie schwent what's up marcia carrie. uh so everybody's here everybody's checking us out everybody's listening in from flocks to yar okay nice. anyway louise a says hola from espana hola hola louise, chica hello, hello. tell us where in spain you live madrid. or visiting from madrid is it? What's up, my? I don't know. Just guessing. Oh. My. I hope I see you soon. <clears throat> my grandma's from Madrid. Your house. So I'm um, rooting Your grandma's for Madrid. grandma's from Madrid? Oh, mm -hmm. I love Madrid. Love. Mm -hmm. Beautiful so place. Mm -hmm. I stayed at the Apartamentos Via, Via Magna. <laughs> I made a movie there. <laughs> no Eliminate. way. Eliminators yeah. was filmed in Madrid. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Oh, I want to go see. I have. I've not seen most of Spain. I've only seen the northeast part. Cause most of my family's in in southern France, so we uh, go down into like Barcelona or like the yeah. Pyrenees or Andorra. But I, I still have not seen Madrid. I haven't seen the south. You know, I really mm -hmm. want to see Cordoba. I really yeah. want to see Sevilla. All these. Oh God, it seems amazing. So such history. Oh God, the castles. So cool. <laughs> mm. So uh, everybody that's coming into the live chat, this is what we're going to do in a minute. We're Oh, there's back of the head, our good buddy, John Orchiola of ScreenRant.com. So in a John. minute, we will uh, hit record and we'll start our recording. This is kind of what we do uh, before we hit record, except Sirach usually has some kind of snacks that we're drooling over. It usually looks really oh. good. <laughs> I didn't bring my snacks. Um. Right? Can wow. I can I thank Carrie for my beautiful Christmas gift? Yes. Thank She's you, in the live sweetheart. chat. Thank you, Carrie. That was so sweet. And your card and um, all your thoughtful, um, beautiful pieces. So thank you. I finally got it the other day. That's um, so cool. Yeah, so good. She's so talented. I don't even know what it was, but I'm sure it was something super Just creative. Just a couple and of beautiful golden boxes, the color of Yar's uniform, you know, to in that theme, mm -hmm. and um, a couple snowflake resin snowflakes that I will hang on my tree. 
um, which, you know, as we know, as we like to say around here, Christmas will be here <laughs> before <laughs> we know it. <laughs> How does yeah. that keep I'll happening? I'll be decorating that damn tree again <laughs> before we know it. I, I mean, it's yeah. like crazy. Um, so. Carrie is our resident crafty bear. Yeah, she yes. she's always, yes, she's she always keeping her hands busy. I and know. Really nice trinkets, beautiful trinkets. I know it. And they're really, they're really finely made. They're beautiful. Yeah. Hey, uh, also, Denise. You remember Sailor Marge? She wanted me to pass yes. this on. Marge, I you. saw Marge in yeah. Atlanta. Now, oh my. Okay. here's the answer to the question. The name. As to, yes, the cruisers that have attended all seven previous cruisers. And everybody okay. in the live chat, if you can name them all, you win. But you otherwise, here are their names. Okay. <laughs> are you going to, you're going to, you, and you, te you email me that list. I'll send them to you. Yeah. Okay, cool. Because I've you got have to write all these down. <laughs> There's like a dozen of them. I know I've, I've got my pen. I've got my pencil and I'm going, no, no, email me. I want to give them a shout out though, too. Kevin Backen. The next name is one. I was like, of course, May Borello. I'm like, there's no way May Borello's missed any of these. Uh, May Borello, Kira Corteville, James and Sarah Mantis Lady. Garrett, John Hamilton, Michelle Jackson, Sherry Kidner, Claudio Reba, Michael and Jennifer Singer, and Ronald Stampfer. That's the crew. So 12, right? If I'm counting yeah, correctly. Yeah, it's like a 1, 2, Something. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Yeah. 12, a dozen, a dozen cruisers, lifers. Oh. Mm hmm. Wow. Now, these are people been to every cruise. Is that what we're seeing? Yeah. They've been to every cruise and they and 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 it's important to point out that there was one year we did two back to back. Mm -hmm. So that's the that's the dividing line, you know. That's because it was counted I I I don't remember if they counted it 4 and 5 or if the two were combined as 4, but I mean that's hardcore. I did them. I we had to disembark, turn yeah. around, and embark right again. We were in the same room, <laughs> and we did the complete. What was there a night? Uh, a night in between? Uh, did you spend the no. night? Yeah, no, no, no. We literally had to get off the ship for security purposes, mm -hmm. and we stood around for in the in the terminal terminal, yeah. and turned around and went back in. And did it, it all like over cruise. again. It's the exact same program, the exact same um, ports once again. It was a trip. Now, was it, was it, uh, did you get a little seasick on the second trip? Was there a feeling I, of that? No, no. It was just like, this is so weird. We're doing <laughs> yeah. like, and you gotta be. You, it's you, like a Star you, Trek episode in itself. It's like, yes, it's like, exactly. <laughs> it's all it's all so weird. You know, it's just all so weird. So nothing's weird because it's all right. so weird. Um, and we just, you know, we just did it all over again. And and we like said, okay, well, maybe we'll we'll we learned something from the first one. Let's try a little bit differently now. This one, but basically, it was just you know we all kept each other afloat and literally, you know, hey. and, um, and it was, it was wild. It it's was a redo. Really All right. So before we hit record here, everybody in the live chat, let us know what did that story remind you of with regards to a next generation episode? Because to me, that story reminded me of cause and effect. One of my favorite next generation episodes cause and effect where they just keep they're in a, a time loop and they just keep doing this and then Jordy explains it i don't understand it but Jordy explained it well <laughs> uh all right well you guys ready to hit record and have yeah. some fun yeah yeah uh before we hit record though do you want to point out everybody check out creationentertainment.com that's creationent.com and uh, they've got a convention, Trek to San Francisco, March 7th through 10th. Sorok yeah. and I are going to be there. There's going to be a lot of fun not doing this when we hit record because this episode isn't going to air until March. By then, it'll be over. 
Uh, so okay. everybody check that out. It's going to be a great Yesterday's time. Yesterday's Enterprise. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Yesterday's yes. episode. All right. I think we're ready. And Sweet. Denise, it's so freaking great having you back. We oh, missed you so much. Yeah, I, we miss you so guys, much. Guys, I miss you too. All right. We'll do a test record here. Now let's just hit record. Let's just go for it. We're feeling rascally. I'm feeling feeling perspicuous. Mm -hmm. I think a little, a little so. Perky. I don't know what it means, but I feel that way. <laughs> All right. Use your imagination. <laughs> I have the worst imagination. Mm. All right. <clears throat> here we go. Everybody in the live chat, here comes an episode of The Seventh Rule. And if I mess up the trivioids, no do overs. In five, four. Three. Notice the shirt, 10 forward. Good. That's a thing. Nice. Appropriate. Five, four, three. Lieutenant Worf gives the greatest reaction in the history of Star Trek. Tasha Yar orders a couple of TKLs, and history never forgot the name Enterprise. Hello, everybody, and welcome to The Seventh Rule with Sirach Lofton and Denise Crosby. Hi, guys. Hello. <laughs> My name is Ryan T. Husk, and today we're doing a review, finally, of Star Trek The Next Generation Season 3, Episode 15, entitled Yesterday's Enterprise, from a story by Trent Christopher Ganino and Eric A. Stilwell. This is a who's who, by the way. Teleplay by Ira Stephen Bear, Richard Manning, Hans Beimler, and Ronald D. Moore. This was directed by David Carson. Special thanks to Linda Andereg and Leah Marcus, a.k.a. DJ Kitty Cat, for sponsoring this episode. This was almost exactly 24 years ago, February 17th, 1990. How are you guys doing? Wow. 1990. Fine year. It was. We're good. We're good. I'm good. It's yeah. good to be back with you guys. I've uh, I've missed you, and and especially for this particular episode, I'm I'm really been excited to to talk about this one. This is a meaningful yeah. one. Yeah. Yeah. Me too. I've been hearing so much about it. Everybody keeps bringing it up <clears throat> all the time over the course of the years, and it's good to finally have seen it now because <laughs> there's just yeah. so much in it. But now yeah. I see why everybody keeps talking about it. It makes sense. It, it, it was that good where you yeah. can talk about it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, you've got Ronald Moore, D. Moore, and you've got Ira, you know, writing this. At the, and, you know, I had forgotten that they wrote that. I remember Eric Stilwell kind of mm -hmm. coming up with the, the idea for this story, which was so impressive. And... Um, but I had forgotten those two were writers on it, and 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 you 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 see it, you know, you mm -hmm. see what happens when these guys uh, get a hold of the material. Okay, can I just go, gush for a second here? I was watching this episode last night, and I was so pumped. It was like I was a kid all over again. I was like, this is how I fell in love with Star Trek. Some stupid kid getting into trouble and suddenly stopping and watching this amazing show and thinking Star Trek is pretty badass. Like I freaking love Star Trek all of a sudden. <laughs> and this episode was just one of the greatest things I've ever seen. And I was so excited to watch it. It was like I was falling in love with Star Trek all over again. And I was so happy that I get to talk with Sirach and Denise and tell Denise just how much you sparkled and you shone and you just exploded back onto the screen. And the people that didn't realize they missed you in season three realized it then because oh. it, it just, it was just so good to see you. And I was like watching it like, was she always this amazing? And I just didn't realize it. It was so good. So enough about 
me going back to my childhood and falling in love with Star Trek and how great the characters were and Tasha Yar and how amazing it was to see Tasha Yar again. I'd love to hear what you guys thought of it. And I'd love to hear, I know Sorok, this is your first time. Denise, I'm not sure if this is your first time, if you've seen it or you certainly remember it. Well, no, I haven't. This is the first time I'm seeing it since it aired. So, um, and there was a lot that I, I, you know, didn't remember, um, you know, just about the, 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 the war that had raged and had been raging for so long and, and how we were about to lose the, this war and, you know, how the stakes are so high. I mean, I knew the stakes uh, were high in the sense of, do we send them back, um, to, to write the, the present, but the fact that we could avert a war of this devastation, I had, I had really forgotten the, the details of that. Um, you know, it, it just, can you imagine if this episode hadn't happened, that I would have left at the end of what we saw in the first season, and that would have been it. What a what a a disappointing what a ripoff what a tr disappointing thing this is like redemption mm -hmm. for for not only the character which is so clear in the episode but redemption for me even being part of the show I feel like it was but redemption I for the writers too I feel like they owed this to you and the fan base and the character and to themselves I think you're right I think it's all it. That's that's why this episode is has such meaning, you know, to me personally, because I I was able to really uh, characterize Tasha Yar in a way that I had never been able to in in the uh, first season, and you know you see all these all these prisms, you know, to her character, all these different attitudes and angles and her soul how mm -hmm. how what a what a brave um uh character she had you know what a noble professional to go back and you know commit to something like that she she didn't have to do that but she had to do that you know mm -hmm. i mean it was just such a great written part Yes, and I thought you were absolutely fantastic in it. Um, I couldn't peel my eyes away from it from the beginning. It just kind of was like, what's going on here? <clears throat> and it starts really, it gets right into it right away. Yeah. It doesn't have this kind of slow buildup. It is right into drama and suspense. And also, like you mentioned, like this heightened sense of, you know, risk. Something as big as at stake. And I think that was immediately present i love the way you performed your character the it, it feels like it feels like when given the opportunity and when it's when the writing is good then you have the ability to take the material and really execute and shine in, the, in like this amazing way which i feel like they didn't properly use when they did have you there there, there were moments there that you you fought through the material and, and were able to shine. But th when you're given such good material like they give you in this, it just reveals how remarkable of an actor you are and how how much, you know, how many layers you put on the performance. Um, I agree with Brian about the, finally the, the, the closure that they gave you, your character in the first season didn't do justice to who you are and your contributions to this show and this franchise really being successful, you, you know, you're a main part of the success of the next generation and you should be honored appropriately. And I think that's what this episode tried to accomplish. And I think successfully did accomplish. Absolutely. I agree. I agree. Thank you so much mm -hmm. for your beautiful words, both of you, but yes, really the, it, it needed, um, it needed this episode to um, define her, the character, to um, bring her back into the this 
this world and and you know the closing line of of Guinan's to Lavar's tell me about Tasha Yar you know it just says it all it's so <clears throat> it's so poetic and such a beautiful way to end that scene uh, in that piece you know because yes that it what it's saying is that this is a, an important character in this in this in this storytelling so you know let's let's give out an important story yeah. if you have an important character with an important story let's give her an important important story i also felt like but, watching you denise like looking at this picture of you behind me there was kind of a softer quality to your character in this episode but i think that softer quality <laughs> came it just felt like there was way more depth they gave that in this episode they wrote i mean we we've it's well mm -hmm. chronicled uh you know what was going on in the first season there were ups and certainly downs but this was such a good episode with such a well written character that your character had depth and like what Sorak was saying it allowed you to really chew the scenery really take and this this it was shocking how many great moments they packed into one episode i was writing notes for days mm. because even some some were just like one word or one look or mm -hmm. one reaction. And like you said, the stakes kept getting higher and higher and higher. Do you remember when you were presented with this script? Do you remember thinking, oh, this is really, really good? And I do want to say also, we can talk about it later. I thought the directing was phenomenal. So I don't know if you could tell immediately from the script or if it just really comes out afterwards in the in the finished product. Well, part of also I want to add to this <clears throat> is having an actor like Christopher McDonald to play Lieutenant Castillo. And Shooter McGavin, my This favorite. guy is like another another level, you know, and you can, he, he and I just had such great chemistry. And um, so it, 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 it heightens every, everything. Um, but when I, when I read the script, uh, I said, you know, my reaction was, oh my God, you know, this is this kind of script I've been waiting for, you know, <laughs> how ironic that I have to die to get the best episode, you know, for this character. <laughs> so, um, yes, I was, I was all in, uh, right away and, you know, completely surprised by it. I never saw this coming. I never, this was never like, um, when I left the show, oh, by the way, in a couple seasons, we're going to bring you back. I mean, that was it. You know, I was dead and gone. And um, so that was a great surprise. And then added an added bonus was that the script was so good. So then you've got you've got Chris playing the role and gives us, you know, all these all these wonderful levels to play this falling in love, you know, element there and this this sharing of, of, of officer lingo and positions and ma the woman knows more than the man in this, in this, you know, tete a tete and this little dance we're doing. And he's obviously very impressed with, with me and, and what I know. And, you know, and so it's, it's, you've just got all these very quickly happening and, um, and the respect, you know, that's that's there with each other. And, but but Chris was just so easy to work with and so delightful and so fun. We we went on to do other parts, other projects together. Uh, I played his wife in an independent movie. And really? I did a guest star on one mm. CBS series he did. So, you know, we've we've continued to know each other over the years and work with each other over the years. And um, we 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 just delight in it I, because we, we would make each other laugh so much in between scenes. And, um, you know, he uh, took me aside at one point and said, how, how do you, how do you say this shit? You know, cause it was like a <laughs> lot of techno, you know, the thing, thing you know, Sarai, it's a techno yeah. battle. Actors come yeah. on and they just, 
they just go, oh my God, you know, what is a, what is a photon torpedo inhaling frequency? You know, they, and it, you gotta, you gotta do it like you, you know it. And, and it, 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 it's tricky for actors to get that going. So he was like, God, how do you do this? You know, it's so funny. <laughs> but uh, we, Denise, I want to ask you, <clears throat> you know, when you were on the first season, that was uh, now, in hindsight, the first couple of seasons of this show are known as kind of like a disaster period of Next Generation uh, in hindsight. Um, but did you notice that in this third season that there were, that, you know, the, the ship was under control from the, you know, the people at the top, the writers and, and so, so forth. Did you see the difference in management style? Did you see a difference in um, the functionality of the way things were going, even, even from wardrobe to makeup to, to some of those departments? Was there um, more fluidity to the way things were running? It, you know, there, there were definitely changes. Um, you know, it had been two seasons, uh, you know, had gone by, uh, almost two seasons. Um, so there was definitely more, yeah, the, the wardrobe department had changed, the, the accommodations had changed. Um, but again, because my, most of my stuff was with Chris McDonald, you know, mm -hmm. it, it wasn't really, I wasn't interacting too much with anyone else, you know, Patrick, um, but it, he was, you know, he was still Patrick and it was, you know, it, it, we, I just delivered my scenes. Um, a nice f thing was wor working with Whoopi, who I mm. hadn't, um, I had met before. Um, she had uh, worked with my father-in-law on a, on something. And so I met her at the house and just really liked her a lot. And I, I, so I was really delighted to work with her. She was just um, so, so giving and easy to work with. Um, and I was very excited about that. Uh, but everyone else, you know, it was, it was kind of odd because it was like nothing had, like I just walked on, like nothing had changed. Like no one came around and said, "Oh my God, it's so you're. It's great to see you back, or you know, welcome, welcome home, or you know, it was just everybody was on doing their thing, and and it was it was just I was just like another guest star." Hmm. Well, Denise, I wanted to ask you too, uh, pretty much a million questions, but I'll start with this one, <laughs> which is: so you remember reading the script? You remember shooting it? Um, I did catch that. It felt like a momentous occasion. You talking with Whoopi. I was like, wow, we never, this is, this is the only time this is it. And I kind of thought, mm -hmm. I bet they, those two characters would have been great friends had they worked together, had they been on at the same time. But I wanted to ask you, Denise, now watching it 24 years later, 34 years later, having never seen it before, did it live up to the hype in your mind and what feelings did you know ran through you as you watched it i think i think it exceeds the hype i i you know memory is is very selective you know and malleable our memories and you you take what you you don't they're not exact so you have a sense of things coming through your life now, you know, that's how our memories, you know, filter through. But watching, so I have a memory of having so much delight in coming back in an unexpected way, never expecting to ever come back to Star Trek again, having such joy with Chris and um, having such a great script, everything good about it. So that's my memory. So now I get to see the episode for real, blank, like a like an audience member. And it's really good. It's really solid. It's it's um deep. It hits a lot of um 
uh, uh, very profound and, and complicated issues. Um, and I think it, 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 it exceeded actually my memory of it. And I, I, it makes me feel happy that, oh, I, 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 this isn't an illusion, you know, this isn't just some thing that people talk about and, and, and it, it really, it really is there. It really, I mean, I, I defy anyone to, to show me a better episode of Next Gen. Yep. Yeah, <laughs> I, 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 I'm, I'm not going to disagree with I'm you. Not because I'm in it. Not really, not because well, I'm in it. I, no, I the story, the it's writing. the story. It is because you're in it, because you did make it amazing, but it is also because the story is so well written. It's it's and, like a it's a Twilight Zone episode. It's yeah, it's and it's Captain just, Garrett. Oh my god. My husband walked in, yes. I was watching the episode, you know, because I couldn't get it on the computer. So I put it on my television in the in in my house. And he walked in and he said, Who is who is she? She's fantastic. You know, and he, I mean, he doesn't yep. normally say that. <laughs> 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 he's a he's a harsh critic, man. But um, yeah. yeah, she's phenomenal. She's yes. like one of my the best guest stars ever. On Trisha O'Neill. Her name Trisha is Trisha O'Neill. Trisha O'Neill. Yeah. I thought the same thing because yeah. she did certain things. For example, when Riker comes onto the ship and he says something to her, and she says, "You'll explain now, Commander." Like, oh, yeah. so good. Yeah, when he says, I'll explain it later. And she's like, no, you'll explain now, Commander. I, I'll rank you. Oh, without... With, Commander. Yeah, just as in, in command as can be. Yes. Laying there half dead. Yes. And the thing is, the thing is, is that, you know, let's let's remind everyone, because we, we've, we've all talked about this, as an actor, what it's like to walk on as a guest star. Mm -hmm. To walk on an, a guest star... And, you know, this team has been working together now in the for three years and they are, you know, solid. And you've got to come on as a captain standing up with Patrick Stewart mm -hmm. and she just nails it. There is she just is so in control and command of her voice, of mm -hmm. her presence. I thought she was amazing. And that's why this these are the elements that make this show this episode mm -hmm. so good. Mm -hmm. Are these guest stars? Yeah. yeah. There was another yeah. moment where um, she is in a, a argument with, with Beverly Crusher, with mm -hmm. Dr. Crusher. And doctor says to her, you know, I, I need you to stay here. You can't leave now. And she says, doctors are always overprotective. Yeah. Uh, and, and Crusher's response was, yes, and captains always push too hard. But the, that exchange right there, she looked exactly like a captain. It was like, no, yeah. you're not going to tell me well, when I can go and what I got to do. I'm out of here. And Absolutely. I just felt like that's no different than um, Kirk. And that's no different yeah. than um, Picard. They would do the same thing in the same moment. So I love that take charge attitude that she brought to that character as well. Yes, I mm -hmm. agree with that 100%. Yeah. And just and think that was, you know, that was a while ago she was a female captain. You know, that was 22 mm -hmm. years earlier so you know she right. she really was formidable mm -hmm. denise i want to jump on what you were mentioning about uh that scene uh or, and sirak was also talking about when he said she said you'll tell me now commander but what you're saying about how it's tough for a, a guest star to come on i was realizing that was her first scene you'll tell me now commander that was her first scene and what a perfect microcosm of what she was doing in real life on that set. What was she in that, in that scene? She was frightened. She was injured. She was down. All these things were happening, but she was think. but the, her character was, I'm not going to let any of that change anything. I'm still in charge here. Right. I'm still going to tell you, you're going to tell me now I'm still the captain of the ship. And what a perfect way that really kind of shows and mirrors what it's like for a guest star coming on. You're new. You might be nervous. You're, you know, you don't know what's where everybody knows each other. And she still comes on and says, no, mm -hmm. I'm still in charge here. I'm still going to make a great performance. I'm still going to do my thing. And it just feels like that character perfectly mirrors 
mm-hmm. who she was as an actress mm-hmm. in uh, that episode. Mm-hmm. Yes, absolutely. And I, I just recall her just being, um, you know, just very professional and, and really lovely and, um, uh, you know, just, just solid, just, just a pro, just knew what mm-hmm. she was doing from the moment she walked on. That's so cool. Yeah, th- this so, was actually, uh, so from what I understand, also uh, you know, the most we've seen Guinan's character, at least that I can remember so far. Um, mm-hmm. This is the most use of Guinan's character that I've seen up until this point, where maybe the most lines, the most scenes. Uh, I would say that this is the most I've seen Guinan. Um, and her, I think it's her, her the the best they utilized her by yes. by a landslide. And I personally think. Man, I got a lot of hot takes in this one. I think this is my favorite Guinan episode. Like, I think, I mean, there are episodes where she's featured more later on, uh, like Time's Arrow, Parts 1 and 2. But to me, this was her best stuff. Mm. Especially that first scene with Worf, where Worf drinks the prune <laughs> juice for the first time, and he Your gets the best quote. reaction ever. I mean... He takes a sip and he's like, like, I watched it like 10 times. His eyes lit up like, oh, my God, this is. And he says, a warrior's drink, you know. Oh, greatest scene ever. It was up there with the root beer scene to me. <laughs> uh, I finally get to see the warrior's drink prune juice scene. I, I've yeah, heard right? many stories about it. I've heard many stories about it. <laughs> many I finally memes. get to see it. Yeah. Many memes. But no, this is my favorite Tasha Yar episode. Um this is a Tasha Yar episode. It's not even close um, because the range of emotions that you go through in this episode alone cover the entire spectrum of a lifetime, right? You know, you have, you're taking charge, you're, you're, you're doing your normal security things in the beginning. You show the vulnerability of, of sensitivity with helping somebody and also kind of falling for them. So there's that love story arc that goes through a show but then there's this existential question of you know we all have inside of us about what the meaning of our lives are you know what the purpose is behind our life and if we can add value to that you know we always strive to at least you know if we can we strive to have meaning in our lives and and find some purpose for it and I think that was what made made this um, your performance and and this episode so dynamic for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. That um, you know that she would you, you see a depth to her that is um, you're able to share in you know. There's not a lot of episodes in the 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 show in the first season where Tasha's contemplating uh, that those kind of deep ideas, those that self worth, the the self purpose. Um, she's reactionary. She's she's doing her job. She's she's taking care of business. But th- in this episode, it gives her time to uh, be reflective and ask the deep question of herself and the writers allow those answers to to come out and and for us to touch upon that and that's um you know again i've i've mentioned before that my audition piece was a very very beautiful uh uh piece written for Mer- the troy and tasha character that was never it, it's almost like they lured me in, you know, that was a <laughs> totally. carrot they dangled <laughs> and said, this is what this is going to be. And then the show wasn't that. No. They never had a scene anywhere near that. Mm-hmm. That was my audition piece. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, it, it, it showed me, it gave me insight into who this woman was. And I love this scene. It's a small little scene, but when Data and Tasha are in the elevator together, and what went through my mind was that whole naked now had never happened. Okay, so they're not knowing each other in that way. 
in that scene in the turbo lift. But you see, you see Tasha really running through her mind, you know, uh, wow, you know, they're that, that I'm that they're going to their death. I mean, mm -hmm. really is that, you know, I mean, all of that is working through her mind and it was, it was just, you, you see that how, how much she cares, how she mm -hmm. holds burden. Another one of those fantastic moments. And uh, we do have to jump to our break very quickly, but that's true. Data, Tasha never had that moment, but he still mm -hmm. showed concern for her in his way. Absolutely. So we're going to jump to our break, everybody. I'm going to tease something. I've got a very controversial opinion with regards to this episode. Uh, Sorok and Denise mm. almost beat it out of me just now, but I was like, no, I'm not going to say it. I'm going to no. tease it until the break. So <laughs> tune in next week, everybody. No, I'm just kidding. We'll be right back <laughs> on The Seventh Rule. Cool. All right, that's fun. So uh, people in the live chat, we got a lot of good stuff going on in the yeah. live chat. Uh, somebody, uh, Peter H. reminds us, Trisha O'Neill played uh, Captain Garrett, as we know. She was also a Cardassian Obsidian Order agent in Defiant, the episode, mm. uh, Deep Space Nine episode defiant another great oh. episode yeah mm -hmm. i remember that mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and uh yeah a lot of people doing great things thank you so much for the super chat michael nemo who says super bittersweet this episode if only uh. more of the first season had showcased your charm and sparkle as much yeah. as this episode does right oh i like Isn't the word the sparkle truth? i like mm -hmm. sparkle you really did, though. Oh, well, we shine so that, hard. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to talk about it, but you shine <laughs> very hard. In this episode. Mm -hmm. yeah, I really, I, I couldn't get away from it. I, I found myself rewinding stuff like over and over again. I, I must have rewound the most in, that I've ever rewatched it, an episode. Oh, that's just nice. rewinding, Me too. And rewinding. Yeah, you were that okay. good, and, and this episode was that good. But let's get into it. Yeah, let's just jump right back into it if we could. Uh, it's funny seeing Eve England actually saying nice things about an episode for the first time. <laughs> she is beside herself. She's like, <laughs> OMG. <laughs> this generation could be good. And uh, yeah. make them, they make them of sterner stuff in Wales. She's tougher to impress. Yeah. But she's yeah. impressed by this one. They're hardy, right. hardy gals. Oh, oh, the profanity that is uh, Charlene Schmidt says Trisha O'Neill also played the Earth president in Babylon 5's In the Beginning. Interesting. Good to know. Mm. All right. Lots of good stuff. A lot of people in the live chat having a lot of fun. Thanks for hanging out with us. What was your nickname us. for Chris McDonald? You, you, you called him something. The what? Shooter McGavin. Shooter McGavin. I've seen that. That was in. Uh, was that in Happy Gilmore or something? Or yes, you yes, nailed it. Yes. Happy Happy Gilmore. Yeah. He's like, and I remember I had seen Happy Gilmore before I saw Yesterday's <laughs> Enterprise. So I'm like, hey, that's fucking Shooter McGavin. And so it took me a while before I could take him seriously because I'm like, no, no, I you're just I you're a rascal, Shooter McGavin. But his. His no, he's a good actor. Performance he, he's a, was so he's freaking great. good; it forced he me to take him. He is a story. rascal, though. I'll tell you. I'll tell you. I'll tell you. <laughs> All right, get going. let's do it then. Yeah. Here we go. <clears throat> We're gonna hit record and come right back in five. Hey, everybody! Welcome back to the Seventh Rule with Sirach Lofton and yeah, the hello. star of <laughs> the Next Generation. Denise Crosby. Yes. Hi, guys. Aww. All right. Here are the trivioids of the week, everybody. It's time for business. Lieutenant Worf <laughs> gives the greatest reaction in the history of Star Trek. Lieutenant Worf says Earth girls are too fragile. The end, but not <laughs> trill. Girls, we know that. Uh, the Enterprise D encounters its younger sister. The Enterprise C was last seen near the Klingon outpost Narendra Three. Doctors always overprotect their patients, and captains always push themselves too hard. Tasha Yar orders a couple of TKLs. Uh, <laughs> Castillo wants Yar to call him Richard because that's what his mom calls him. Ew. 
<laughs> you know, I yeah, like, I didn't know. About I was like, that I like line. what they're trying to do I there. Was like, what? <laughs> I'm just gonna go with that. And lastly, history never forgot the name Enterprise. All right. <laughs> so let's see, where do we start here? You know, I teased this. So here is my hot take that I almost gave away 15 minutes ago when you guys were talking about Rachel Garrett. Rachel Garrett, to me, top five Star Trek captains ever to me. Of all of them, that includes Picard and Cisco. That includes Edward Jellico. He might be in that top five too, guys. Uh, but I just think Rachel Garrett and Trisha mm -hmm. O'Neill are absolutely phenomenal. I did not know this actress before Star Trek. I'm ashamed of that because she is extremely good. Just watching her eyes, mm -hmm. she just she takes control, but she has this inner strength, this inner beauty. She has intelligence and poise. I mean, just a great character that was made, that was really pushed over the top by Trisha's performance, in my opinion. To me, in the whole universe of Star Trek, she's top five uh, wow. captains ever. I, I won't I won't fight you on that one. No way. No yeah, way. and that, well, that speaks to what you were saying earlier, Denise, about the magnitude of what was at stake in the beginning. I mean, in this episode, when you have Picard's speech about the Federation lost almost half of Starfleet, and we're talking about, you know, I, I didn't know the number, but it was 40 million. Was it 40 million, 40 billion? It was like, it was some some ridiculous number, but... yeah. That that that's how important this moment was. That it's you know triggers on this this war that costs half you know essentially could be the end of Starfleet in the Federation. Right. right. Um, so yeah, I do think that the performance that Trisha gave was awesome. Um, the moments on the the gurney inside of the hospital when she demands that you know what's going on here, and Picard kind of says, "Okay, let me," you know, he excuses. Uh, Dr. Crusher and says, you know, I'm going to get in and have a discussion with her because she deserves to know. Also, when she says, I need my crew to know, tell my crew. And yeah. Picard says, if if you if you want, I will do that. So these were like they were speaking to each other as peers. And I like that about that um, discussion between them. It was a, it was a peer to peer relationship. It was captain to captain. Right. And the yeah, authority absolutely. was definitely there. Yeah, I felt absolutely. the authority. There were also moments when I felt like Riker was getting, you know, put in his place a few times in this episode. There was a moment there where he says, if you want my opinion, Captain, and she's like, mm -hmm. this is <laughs> this is the briefing. You know, I'm not <laughs> yes. seeking your yes, yeah. your consent. And I was like, whoa, he just, yeah. he just shut him down right there. Uh, yeah, I, timeline. I, well, I thought he was getting a little, you know, in that Rikery anger, you know, growth yeah. thing he does. And, you know, I, I went, where? Wow. What? What's why but, are you so yeah. angry? You know, here. Yeah. But he got shut down a few times yeah. on the, yeah. uh, trying to bring that energy. And uh, Picard wasn't having it. <laughs> the, uh, the Captain mm -hmm. Garrett wasn't happy, having it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, that's right. <laughs> No, but he well, was there was like, a lot go of go back there... to your room, Riker. <laughs> right. There were <laughs> we a lot of yeah. differences we don't need because you. Yeah. they're going yeah. through war. They're in 22 years of war. Yeah. Yeah. Riker and mm -hmm. Picard are not like, hey, old chum, they're at each other's throats. Yeah. You notice yeah. there was no wharf there because they're at war with the Klingons. So there's a situation right. there. There's no wharf. That's why Riker was at tactical when Denise goes mm -hmm. on to the Enterprise C. And then when Riker dies, by the way, what's up with rocks? There's always rocks on the ship and then rocks explode. <laughs> yet the thing that kills people is like a slice of metal. It's very confusing, but that's just <laughs> <it's> space. <laughs> things are different. But there was no wharf because of the Klingon situation. There was also no Troy because it's a battleship. So these were very interesting differences. Yeah. The universe had the different uh, uniforms. The lighting immediately changes. Yeah. Yeah, which the I thought was, was great. Was that was David Carson. Yeah, that was uh, really subtle. That was nice. Really nice. David Sharp Carson, really amazing. Art. Yeah, I love I loved working with David. 
great. I was he's so, a he talented was man, and you could just so you could tell because there were shots that he was taking. He would do a lot of moving shots uh, mm -hmm. where he would Beautiful. start into a two and then move around into another shot. A lot of movement. Uh, a, a lot, lot of start like on the a, council. Yeah, yeah, like like a like a feature director, you know. Yes. A, a television director. Yeah. Yes, when he moved you know, in yeah. into the close up with you and Chris McDonald on the the beam platform, he kind of started at the console and then moved into mm -hmm. a nice close up of the two of you, slowly moving as the dialogue went. It was just cinematically well yeah. done uh, for David Carson. I have to give him a huge amount mm -hmm. of credit. Also, the lighting difference made it easier for me to track because I was, you know, trying to find out what what's going on here. Uh, there's a moment where I'm like, what's going on here? I got to figure this thing out. Um, right. So, so directing wise, I, I really enjoyed, there was a moment also where they took a, a, like a, a little bit of lighting on Picard's face. He kind of stepped into a light and his that was eyes beautiful. were little. I, I noticed that too. Yeah. Like yeah. he walked right into this light yes. on a bar across his eyes. It was mm -hmm. really yes. nice. Noticeable. Well, you go. On yes. that note, Strzok, yeah, I, I don't notice directing too often until, unless it really hits me over the head. And I felt like the directing here was phenomenal. I can't wait for our executive producer, Jason Oaken, to talk about how great the directing is. If he doesn't, I'll be yeah. very disappointed. But Strzok, <laughs> I want to ask you, does this episode live up to the hype for you? Because you've heard yesterday's Enterprise yeah. mentioned a few times. And I certainly thought of you. On this week on Ryan thought of Ciroc when, <laughs> and it was like the entire episode. I kept thinking I would love to be seeing it through your eyes. When you were watching it, I just kept pictured you honestly being gripped by it and really loving it. But am I wrong? What, what did you think when you watched it? Yeah, this this episode, I, I would have to say um, Denise is right that it, it, it is seated the hype for me. I really thought it couldn't be that great. Um, <laughs> no, I mean, really, I was thinking, what, what is all the hype about? And like, I don't know why yesterday's enterprise made me think of something else. I don't, you know, made me think it was, it was a, a flashback episode or something to that effect. I, I, I didn't, I, I, I wasn't expecting what I got. Um, the other thing was I've had the feeling where I would wake up and then maybe some of the people that are listening now, I've had that feeling as well, but I've had a feeling where I'm like, is this an alternate reality that I woke up to? Like, is this another dimension that I'm in where it's just something feels a little bit off. Um, and of course I've gotten over those feelings, but that I automatically re related to when I saw Whoopi kind of like, you know, something's mm. off here, you know, and, I've had that similar a feeling. So that was one thing. Um, but yeah, you know, Denise, really, I, I got to keep going back to your performance because there was so much there and how great you were in this episode. Um, because there were subtle things that they did to make you pick up on things that showed me your intelligence as a, as a, as a human being, as a character. And one of those things was when you were discussing with McDonald about, you know, when he were sending him back to the ship to essentially go fight to his death. And you were saying, well, this is what you can do if you ever, if you know, this maneuver. And then you caught yourself saying, oh, you know, I'm, I'm, this guy has a lot to deal with, you know, right and I'm over here. I'm giving him too much advice. I'm going, talking too much. Let me let him soak in the gravity of it and figure things out on his own. I thought that was, showed intuition as a character just to be observing those kinds of things and to write those kinds of observations is great in the writer's room but just the way it was portrayed it showed me a level to your character that that was cerebral that was taking in stuff and the moment for example when you sense that Whoopi Goldberg or that Guinan was that there was a look that she gave you like 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 she had seen a ghost and right. you sense that right i mean you guys have never been in a scene together so you wouldn't know her character you wouldn't know her looks you wouldn't know how she is at any other time from any other time essentially so this right this moment of the look and you observing that showed me oh this is a sensible character again no words exchanged but just how intelligent your character is to be able to pick up on these things um 
that's what good character writing is is about and that's what these writers did a great job of accentuating for Tasha Yar and then uh, another big surprise for me was Ryan you said this episode came out in February of 1990 and I had to look this up because mm -hmm. the the movie Ghost came out in the exact same year in 1990 which is Whoopi Goldberg's movie which is a wow. movie in which she can see ghosts. Right. Oh, similar. Yeah. Came... Oh, wow. Right? Wow. Am, I, am I the only one that's put this together? Because I was thinking, this has a feeling like in the, in Ghost, when she sees Patrick yeah. Swayze's character and she's able yeah. to see a ghost, it, sees, it feels like she is able to see you as a ghost of right. some sort in this episode. Right. Absolutely. Right. So and they both came out in the same year, nineteen ninety. What if at so the I, end, that final scene, kind of like when she's like, "Ditto, what the hell is Ditto?" If she's like, "Tasha, who the hell is Tasha?" That's <laughs> like a no. I just, I just, I, I, I just thought that was a clever storyline. Yeah. So uh, another just like exceeding expectation moment for me was just all of those things combined. Um, but nobody can top your line for me is when you when she says you're not supposed to be here to when she tells you that, you know, and yeah. you, you accepting the gravity of like, I mean, can you imagine somebody telling you you're not supposed to be here, you know, and and, and that shaking up the foundation of what's going on, your perception of you know life? Oh, my God. Know? I mean, And I, you did you it know. so much with so much gravity. And so it was so genuine for me. Yeah. I mean, you layer that onto the fact that she's falling in love with this man who's about to go to his death and she's not supposed mm -hmm. to be here. I mean, it, it just gets really like spaghetti, you know, all this stuff gets intertangled, you know, this, this, and, and, and you've got to, and, and moving now you've got it and you've got a ticking clock. You know, you've always got a clock present. So you've got to make some moves quickly, decisions fast. You can't linger. This is not, you know, um, contemplation. You've got to make some really quick discoveries and decisions. And you don't yeah. get it. You know, and those, those words were so impactful, though. The, yeah. you know, where, when you say, when you say that Whoopi, I mean, where to, am I uh, supposed guy, to be? Yeah, where yeah. am I supposed to be? And she says, dead. And you're like, you know, it's like, Wow. And then she goes on to say, you know, an empty death, a death without a purpose. And it's like, oh, my God, this is, you know, this and it was is so what meta. we saw. It yeah, was, this was meta. They're, they're talking to the audience right there. Yeah, we yeah. saw an empty death, a death without a purpose. Yes. That's how you die. Yes. Well, that's the beauty of this episode, too, is that it's inclusive. Because we, the, you're in, the audience is with you on this. The people who have been watching the show you know, um, from from season one are in on this. And it's kind of for them in a way, you know, because there was a lot of um, pushback when uh, Tasha Yar was died this way. I mean, still people come to me and go, oh my God, the tar thing, the tar monster, the, you know, that, mm -hmm. you know, it's not like the skin of evil. And, you know, that sounds... That sounds formidable, you know, like, wow, you, I was taken out by the skin of evil, the most evil thing in, in the universe. But no, you got, you know, knocked off by a tar monster. And, and it was it was ridiculous. You know, you didn't fight. You didn't protect. You didn't, you know, fight back. I mean, what the hell was that thing? You know, it was so it's it was it was such a letdown for people for this character's death. And, um, you know, yes. I, they had to sort of rectify this in some way, or they did. They did. Denise, they did. They did. We teased something earlier, and people are going to riot if we don't give them what we teased, which was, <laughs> you said Shooter McGavin oh. was a rascal in real life. And I could just <laughs> feel the tension of the public building, like, <laughs> we're running out of time. Okay. Were they lying to us? Maybe, <laughs> right. but not this time. Well, we 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 talked about um, the line that he you you in the trivioids said um, you can call me Richard, 
Um, that's what my mother called me. So in between takes, you know, we had done the scene. And um, so we had done it a couple times. And Chris, you know, said, you know, you can call me, you can call me Richard. That's what my, my mother calls me. And in one take, we are go through the thing. And he says, well, you could call me Dick. Yeah. <laughs> and I just <laughs> lost it. I just lost it. I just went, yeah. like, yeah, okay. It's like bathroom potty humor, like yeah. so childlike. But, but he, you know what? It looked yeah. like he he was pulling out a little genuine reaction out of you. When he paused, it almost looked like when he said, you can call me Richard. When he said it, that pause almost looked like he was looking at you like, you don't know which one I'm going to say. I, do I, you? Yeah, I'm, I, I'm telling you, I, he, he, it was yep. absolutely going to be that. And he had me there. So the other, the other one, I think I may have talked about it on, on here, but um, so the, the beautiful scene that Garrett and P Picard have at the end, they're in, they're, they're downstage and, um, Castillo and Yar go back into the back to do some more repairs, and Chris and I are 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 on the floor, and we're, we've got a panel removed, and we're fixing a panel, and we're we, we have no lines, we're in the background completely, and they have this long just you know page of dialogue, just huge speeches, very quietly acting, um, serious, and Chris looks at me. And I start losing it. And I'm going. <laughs> and and they cut. And I start pretending I'm coughing. And Chris asks for water. And, you know, we completely broke the scene up. And I was just <laughs> laughing. I could, and I, from that point on, I said, do not look at me. Do not look at me in the eyes. I couldn't hold. I, I, I would just laugh. I'd lose it. Uh, every time. Yeah, he's a rascal. He's a rascal. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> well, that qualifies. That qualifies. Yeah, it does. But he did have a smooth line. I really enjoyed um, because this, this, this. You know, we always talk about falling in love in one episode. I think Ryan brings that up a lot. Yep. And this actually, you know, sometimes it works. Most of the time, it doesn't work. Right. Um, this time, it felt like it worked. Totally it, worked. It just, it just, sometimes it works. And yeah. that's because you felt the chemistry between the two of you. I did. Um, and there was, there was so much at stake because I thought the writers did such a great job of inserting this Jordy line where Jordy says, who knows if we're dead or alive. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he does that as he's walking by you. And it was just like, oh my God, this is, this is a great line. Yeah. Um, but back to Chris McDonald, I, I also liked when he said, you know, if you get back to Earth and see a man staring at you across oh. the room in his late fifties, oh my God. Oh my God, mm -hmm. I I had okay, guys, I had tears in my eyes watching it, and I think it was just you know filled with the whole emotion of seeing the episode again and and enjoying genuinely enjoying it. And the pride I have, you know, in that episode about that show and and the gratitude I have that we were able to go back and do, you know, have a chance to do that episode. And of course, that's and it, and and he does. He did it. I mean, it was like out of an old fashioned movie. You know, it was like a throwback to the 40s. You know, if you see a man across the room staring at you, well, you never know. I mean, those are the lines like mm. you, you know, you hear mm -hmm. in old fashioned films. It yeah. was just so beautiful. And my heart. Yes. Fell. And um, of course, yeah. this is this relationship that that Castillo and Yar have is what I I created Sila out of. My original idea for Sila which will alt be altered eventually, but it's because of that relationship that I came up that with that Yar was pregnant. Wow. 
Cool. Yeah. And so stay we'll, tuned for that, everybody. Yeah. We'll talk more as uh, that goes on. I I have to admit to my a little uh confession, and that is you had me tearing up and crying too. Oh. And I think it's only the second time that I've cried watching a Star Trek episode. I think the visitor was the other time, but um you had me crying and i was really emotionally moved i i, I found myself wiping away tears and i'll tell you where it was mm -hmm. um it was where you were talking when you were talking to picard you asked for the leave of absence and the your line when you say i've always known the risk that comes with a starfleet uniform if i'm to die in one i'd like my death to count for something Mm. And man, that moved me so much because it made me think of all of the soldiers and and then the people that have put on uniforms yeah. and put their life on the line. <clears throat> so yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't hold it back in. It was one of the best lines, and instantly it was the thing that convinced Picard because ultimately that's what every person wearing a uniform wants. Yeah. They want they want to go out like that, you know, and Picard wants to go out like that, too, himself. And I just thought that was such a great line. And it really yeah. moved me. I, I could not hold back the tears. I, know. I agree. I got him in my Beautiful. eyes. I know. I love it. And then yeah. and then that, like you said, it turns Picard. He goes, Lieutenant. And then he, he takes that moment and he says, permission granted. Ah, oh, yeah. yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was too much. It was too much because that sums up, you know, the sacrifices that our military make, the the sacrifices that we go through, and it also shows, you know, that we honor that, you know, both in as the person who's dying and also as the people who have who to live? live on with the grief. Yeah, Absolutely. we honor that sacrifice. So let's not amazing, forget that. Let's not forget that. Amazing delivery. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing well, delivery. You had you were top notch on that. I I, I could not believe it. Uh, so yeah. good. I think you moved a lot of us with that, Sirak. I mean that uh, that scene is one of the uh, best, one of the best ever written, but I'm so glad. I'm I'm really happy that you guys got to see this episode and that we are all here witnessing your reactions to it. Thank goodness you liked it. Otherwise, oof, <laughs> this would be awkward. But we have just a couple minutes. So it is time for yeah, how much time do you have? The home run of the episode. Oh. Uh, what do you think, Denise? Who gets the home run of today's episode? Oh, goodness. Great. <laughs> I, I'm, I, I don't think I can be, um, <laughs> you know, objective on this one. So, um, I mean, look. This to me is 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 such a gift um, to this character, on you know, like I said, in in on so many levels, you know that that um, you got to you got to really get to know Tasha. You got to see her again. She got to um, experience a, a storyline that she never, you know had before and in 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 ways she was never able to express and again that she would make that choice you know that she goes out with such power and strength and honor so tasha yar's got to get the home run for me yeah what about you Sarah? yeah I, I can I can agree more. Um, you know this episode. You know Whoopi Goldberg is an Academy Award winning mm. actor, and she is fantastic. I mean, she is amazing. She the face, the, the camera loves her. She is just gorgeous to watch, and it was you that shined the most in this episode. Um, not to knock her performance or anyone else's performance in this episode, but you delivered. You never broke the character. You kept that 
um, poise in your facial features. You kept the stoic look on your faces when they were needed. You were vulnerable when it needed to be. And you ultimately showed a level of courage that, you know, we all dream to have, you know, as, as in life. We all want to be able to be a hero or to make a, a, a an art of valor, to do something that has valor in it. And I think that, um, you know, you showed that not only by the character, but by the performance and by going back into the den and where they, you know, abandoned you essentially and came back and hit a home run right there in their home studio on their court. That to me shows that's amazing. You know, it made me think, I know they had to rethink after watching this episode, like why yeah. the hell did we get rid of this character? She's so amazing. <laughs> so I, I Damn, think we just we, killed her again. <laughs> what are we doing? <laughs> yeah. Without a doubt, it is, it is oh, you, Denise, you are phenomenal this was an a plus plus performance like i said you made me cry when i heard that 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 plea that you made to picard um and it came from such a real place you're and, and you never broke your performance and it was such a good tribute to tasha yar and the courage that she, that she has um in this show uh, uh, thank you that's Man cannot beat this. And you looked fantastic. I, I mean, know. Hair, you looked so you freaking so good. Lean. Your hair was just, uh, you just looked amazing too. Oh, so let me add that too. Thank you, honey. <laughs> well, I'll tell you for me, the home run of the episode, I mean, this feels like an all-star game, honestly. It felt like everybody was hitting home yeah. runs. The who's who in the writer's room, uh, the music was unbelievable. Yes. Captain Picard delivering one of the most memorable lines in my mind, which was not good enough, damn it, not good enough. I don't know why that worked for me so good, but I've remembered that my whole life. That one line, there are a lot of lines I remember, you know, my whole life, which was like also like Whoopi saying, tell me about Tasha Yar. Mm. Uh, and even little moments mm -hmm. before that, uh, at the end, Picard just says, send a class one sensor probe, blah, 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 blah. But it just shows that everything's normal. Nobody cares. Uh, no big deal. Uh, Guinan, Picard, Riker, all amazing. Rachel Garrett, I mean, mm. you know, the, one of the best captains ever. But Tasha Yar didn't just hit a home run. She hit for the cycle today. <laughs> uh, for those of you that like baseball, Tasha Yar hit a freaking cycle today. Big time for everything that Sirac mentioned and everything that everybody in the live chat is mentioning. So big time. That was big time. Uh, anyway, yeah. wow. speaking of big time and God, Denise, it's so great having you back. Oh, well, speaking... to share this with you guys, really, so I haven't seen it, you know, I mean, it's again, you're, you're, you're allowing me to step into that and giving me permission to watch it and look at it with open eyes and a fresh perspective. And I'm, I'm, I, I, I'm so pleased. I'm, I'm, I'm over the moon that this episode mm. is, is as good, if not better than, than I remember it. It's gotta be so gratifying. I mean, imagine if you watch it and you're like, yeah, it was okay, yeah. but thank yeah, goodness like, it was like, so good. What are talking about? This thing sucks. <laughs> no, I mean, really. <laughs> I, I, this, is a ten, this is a 10 episode. And a lot, like you said, an all-star game when it comes to the writers, when it comes to the directors, yeah. when it comes to the guest stars. Yeah. I thought Patrick was extra, extraordinarily good in this episode as well, Patrick yeah. Stewart. Yeah. Um, but just nobody, nobody did it like you did. And it was just so amazing that I'm glad that they gave you some closure. We always look for closure in life. You yeah. know, we want that moment where you just can say goodbye and and I love yeah. you. And it, it was it was all of that kind of wrapped in a bow for me. Yeah. Right. Me too. Felt like Star Trek was doing a love letter to Denise, Crowley, almost like a mea culpa. You know what I mean? That's what it felt like. And yeah, giving you and a it, real a real episode, a real. It's interesting, and, and and I don't even know if it was a conscious you know, effort. I, I'm, I, I don't think everyone, I don't think people sat around behind closed doors and said, you know, we didn't do that character right. We didn't do that character justice. I think by chance, Eric Stilwell 
you know, conjured this story up. Mm. And it it was enough, it, it was intriguing enough to follow through. And once those writers got a hold of it, um, they- I, they I know Ira ate it. this up because Ira's mind likes that. He might've heard Eric Stilwell say something and his mind started, his wheels yeah. started spinning. Yeah, yeah, we'll have to ask him. Next time you have to ask him, yeah, yeah, because I had this... totally forgotten that Ira was on that script. So, mm -hmm. uh, next time I see him, absolutely. Well, you know, uh, everybody, the rule is it's been mentioned twice. Sorok said justice once, Denise said justice once. The rule is when somebody says justice twice, we got to show <laughs> justice. <laughs> there it is. Uh, the best right. Star Trek outfits ever, yes. And uh, we want to give a very special thanks to our all-star team for damn sure. Homer Frizzell, Dr. Anne-Marie Siegel, Eve England out in Wales, finally thinking, hmm, maybe TNG isn't so bad. <laughs> uh, Yvette Blackman, Tom, TJ Jackson Bay out in Missouri, uh, Titus Moeller, Dr. Muhammad Noor, Tierney C. Diekman, Anil O. Palat, Joe Balserati, Mike Goo, Dr. Stephanie Baker, <laughs> Carrie Schwent, Faith Howell, Edward Foltz, my live from Tokyo in LA right now, actually. Uh, oh. Matt Boardman, the Matt Boardman, I should say. Chris McGee, Justin Weir, Jake Barrett, Henry Unger, Allison Leach Hyde, Julie Manisfee, Marsha Classic Schreier, Greg K. Wickstrom out in Hawaii, Jed Thompson, Dr. Susan V. Gruner, Glenn mm -hmm. Iverson, Dave Gregory, Tim Baum, and of course, Jason Oaken. All right, everybody, stick around. We will be right back with the free-for-all on The Seventh Rule. Yay! Yeah. You guys, that was rocking. That was cool. So much fun. Okay, that so really good. I'm going to bring in the free-for-all people here, but we're also going to say a couple things. There are a couple things pointing out in the oh. live chat. Man, there's a bunch of them. Let me, yeah? Can you can you excuse me for one sec while I yeah, go, go to the restroom? I'm going to grab Absolutely. some tea. Some more tea as my yeah. throat is right. You're okay? Oh, yeah, definitely. One sec? Definitely. Okay. Yeah. Okay, good. I'll be right back. I'm going to cough drop myself. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> mm hmm You said there were a lot of comments in the live chat? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so let's go through this. I'm going to bring in the free-for-all people, and then I'll mention the couple live chat things that were great uh, while I'm bringing these guys in here so that they get their mentions and their propers. Nice. Yeah, this episode, man, it lived up to the height. They all come. Unbelievable. Yeah. It's like the LeBron James of episodes. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, Melissa? Hey, guys. What's up? Hi. Hey. Eve England. <laughs> Hello. We've been talking a lot about you today. Good things. <laughs> yeah, well, this is a good episode. All right, somebody yeah. mute your YouTube. <laughs> What's up, Sue? TJ, oh, they're all filing in. What's up, Mai? Live from the LAX Hilton. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay welcome so to Ciroc, uh i believe yeah. dj kitty cat was the first to point this out but a lot of people were shouting it from the rooftops of course captain garrett was the red lady in picard season three remember they were going after the, that red lady statue that statue was of captain garrett so that was an interesting and okay. cool thing ah. also okay. Also, um, who else? Oh, Chris Gavin said that uh, she would have made a great Janeway or a good Janeway. He said, mm -hmm. and I'll be honest, when Voyager first aired that very first time and they introduced the character of Captain Janeway, my first thought was, I bet that actress that played Garrett, Rachel Garrett would have been a great, it would have been great if it was just mm -hmm. like, I just thought. Rachel Garrett would have been great, but obviously that doesn't work out. So that's cool. And uh, Anne Marie Siegel, when uh, Denise was talking about, you can call me Dick, she said, Oh, there's Anne Marie now. She says, That's definitely not DLP, lovey. 
So that was funny. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not DLP. So let's what's up, not guys? make Homer shake his head. Me? <laughs> Homer's here. Wow, we have a Homer sighting. What a deal. Wow. <laughs> Out in the wild. Everybody shakes their head yeah. quite as well as Homer does. Yeah. I know. Right? <laughs> oh, you guys are too kind. <laughs> it brings me joy, Homer. <laughs> Patrick <laughs> Mahomer. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Does that work? It <laughs> makes me sad. And I bet Homer Frizzell knows the overtime rules, unlike some other people. <laughs> oh, too soon, too uh, soon. Too <laughs> soon. Uh oh. oh. Uh, what madness did I miss? Oh, I'm just talking about getting shit about San Francisco. Overtime oh, my oh my god, my your background, my favorite heroes. That's you, yeah. baby. Oh, you sweetie. <laughs> How's everyone? Good. Good. Doing Good. great. I'm glad you, you like your stuff, Denise. Huh? I'm glad you liked your stuff. Oh, Carrie, thank you so much, sweetheart. Yeah. I, he I heard so you say it, but I was driving, so I couldn't type anything. So sweet. Thank <laughs> you. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. And I, ha I had to make you some Daleks, because you said you would make a good Dalek. I know. <laughs> Only you would pick up on that. <laughs> so Dr. Sue Gruner. So we miss you, Denise. We miss you. Also, oh, everybody, we got a couple of uh, guys. Yeah. We got a couple great uh super chats in the live chat. Puka Hare said, or Puka Hare, I believe it is, would be interesting if Tasha was able to escape and survive, but had to go deep into hiding due to Sila. I hoped both would show up in Picard. Yeah. That would have been something. Never. And, uh, Never. Michael mm. Nemo said, well, Picard. Uh, <laughs> Michael Nemo says, was there ever any talk of having a mirror universe Yar show up? Also, I secretly wish Sila would have defected yeah. or something redemptive. Yeah, did they ever talk about that, Denise? So um, they, not uh, being... Um, the the fans have certainly presented that before you know people have mentioned uh well if if you guys does anyone play star trek online okay so um matt did you ever play the sila game yeah yeah iteration so tasha was in that yeah and yeah. she was mm. on an she she had survived and was living, you know, in like mm. a cave somewhere all this all this time. And doesn't Sila go back and reconnect with Yar? Yeah, mother? yeah. I'm okay, to remember. There, yeah, it's been a while. There, there is some. They <laughs> see Star Trek Online. The the lead designer Al Rivera, who sadly hey. is no longer with um, Star Trek, has moved on to the DC um, universe. But mm. he designed an amazing. I mean. It was so much more eloquent, the storyline for Sela than they have ever done in the show. Mm -hmm. So there, there was always a possibility of that. And I actually brought that up one time to Terry Metalis because he wanted, he, he um, toyed with the idea of bringing Sela onto Picard <clears throat> But he felt it was too arbitrary, too, too just, uh, uh, you know, tacked on and felt that Sila deserves is such a badass, complicated villainess that she deserves her own, you know, story arc. So, you know, if he ever does the legacy show, he's talked to me about bringing Sila into that. The... Mm -hmm. The the I am about to do another Star Trek online game though that is a mirror mm. universe game. Ooh. And Sila is now a freedom fighter, and Tasha Yar is a Borg queen. Wow. What the That's, heck is going on in me? Right? Dropping some bombs on us. That's the online world. That's you know. <laughs> 
they go they go That's deep amazing. they're they're a trip man i can't even so i'm going to record that i think in um april but just monday to, no just tuesday i recorded another game of the voice of sila called um uh world of wars i don't know if you guys know that um video game world of wars they do battles you know they do uh ship battles they do tank battles it's all about battles battles wars wars and they're nice. they've dropped that they've dropped a star trek game so it can it it, it involves Sila picard original spock mm. and gowron Wow. Oh, wow. Right. okay. I'm going to have to check that's, this out. That's cool. It, yeah. I don't know. I mean, I just went in there. That's and... a combination right there. I'm downloading <laughs> it. I'm downloading it right now. <laughs> right? Cool. Yeah, weird. So Sila's floating about in the she's in out the there consciousness, you know, suddenly. So <laughs> maybe we'll yeah. get to see her again. I'm, I'm, I'm fingers crossed. Speaking of fingers crossed, everybody ready to, uh, record this free for all everybody watching in the live chat right now oh that's funny uh, i can see that our live chat numbers dropped a couple minutes ago that's all of you that were watching <laughs> and then hopped on. <laughs> <laughs> and i dropped by yeah. like a dozen um that's so everybody watching in the live chat we're going to record our first segment here and then we're going to go dark we, we record our second one later we're going to go dark because in 30 minutes the next panel is going up, which is unmissable. 60 years of Star Trek and the Cage with experts and history buffs like Dr. Trek, Larry Nemechek, Sci-Fi Sisters, Sabrina Wood, and Roddenberry Network's John Champion with Sandy Gimple, who was an actor on the very first unaired pilot, The Cage, 60 years ago. Wow. Unfreaking believable my god all mm. right let's do it i think i know what sue's gonna give it <laughs> <laughs> let's have some fun here we go we're gonna hit record in five what a day homer's back mm -hmm. <laughs> hello everybody welcome back to the seventh rule with sirach lofton and Denise Crosby, this is the free for all. Hi, the Hello. kids. It's about to get crazy around here. Melissa Ooh. Longo is here. Hi. We've got Jason M. Oaken. Uh, Eve England is out in Wales. We're going to see what's going to happen there. Chris McGee, the Dark Lord, is here. Allison Leach Hyde, great shirt. Dr. Susan V. Gruner is also present. TJ Jackson Bay's got a chat pack shirt. Pretty rad. Uh, Mai is live in Tokyo, maybe LA. Uh, Greg Kenzo is wearing his It's a Jake shirt out in Hawaii. Uh, Justin Weir is here. Great posture. Matt Boardman is also here with his Ferengi family shirt. Mm. Uh, Faith Howell is enjoying uh, prune juice. Uh, Tierney C. Diekman is here as well. Carrie Schwent, a.k.a. Crafty Bear. Homer Freezy is out somewhere in New Yeezy. And Dr. Anne-Marie Seagull probably liked this episode, I hope. All right. First things first. Jake Sisko guesses the IMDb score. Oh. Ah, <laughs> it's got to be in the nines. It's got to be in the nines. It's got to be, I will say a 9.5, a 9.5. There are a lot of trolls on the internet. You never know how they're going to vote. Does anybody else have any guesses that doesn't already know? I thought it'd be about 9.5, yeah. 9.6. 8. 8.8. 8.8. 8. 8. Mm. Mm. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> the answer is on IMDb of all the people that have voted 9.2, mm -hmm. which is still extremely good. Great guesses. All right. 
Did anybody catch the non-appearance mention? Yes, this week? I got yes. it. Yes, Doctor yes. Salar. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> I never heard that until this time. <laughs> yes, that was amazing. amazing. What? Well, wait, what was it? Doctor Salar. She was oh. a character that was introduced in the second season of Vulcan, played by uh, Susie Plaxon, right? Yeah. Right. Yes. And yep. they introduced her like she was going to be a recurring role or recurring character. And then she just never came back. But we at least heard her in this third season episode. She Does was- Tashi Yar count as a Nam, though, since we didn't, don't see the character? She is Tashi Yar. <laughs> Oh well, okay. These Chris, the... Chris, what are you doing? Chris, you we doing? it was yesterday. We watched <laughs> yesterday's Enterprise this week. <laughs> oh, is that the one we were reviewing? <laughs> yeah. so we we <laughs> skipped ahead a few it, weeks. It is that, an uh, alternate reality. Yeah, she, yeah. Not the same so maybe, uh, maybe you're there. I no, miss you, Homer. No, I, I can Let, see Homer. people have gone off yeah, the rails Homer. a little bit. I'm back. <laughs> All right. Well, luckily, luckily we've got Melissa Longo here. To get us right back on the rails, everybody, let's go for it. Melissa, what did you think about this episode? I gave it a two. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, I love this episode. I love, love, love this episode. And it reminded me how much I love Tasha Yar. Uh, <laughs> I can't say that enough. It, she was one of my first, my favorite characters in the first season. Um, and it, of course it was devastating when she went away. And then to see her and you, Denise, back in this episode was just such a brilliant treat. It, it was it was such a well done episode and everyone played so well off of each other. You and interact, or Tasha interacting with Guinan was just so, those moments were just so special and so rich and and not a whole lot of word needed, needed to be said, but it was so full and rich. And um, uh, yeah, it, it just renewed my love for Tasha Yar. And um, the, the, line that Guinan says to Jordy at the end where mm. she says tell me about Tasha Yar and I lost it <laughs> because ah we want more Tasha um and I will finish with saying this episode left me with a lot of more questions um because we don't really know what happened to the enterprise when it went back into the rift and we don't really know if the klingons showed up to help them out and so we don't really know if tasha and um lieutenant castillo got together <laughs> in real life because they both survived the battle because mm. that's my head cannon <laughs> <laughs> because that love story worked for me as well. It was it was an organic love story that just felt right. So yeah, a plus. maybe maybe happened. You never know in Star Trek. Jason yeah. M. Oaken, what's up? Did you love the directing or what? Hi, it was it was wonderful. I mean, this is a bona fide classic. I, I think it perhaps is the first next gen classic they they sort of come fast and furious afterwards but this certainly is one of the best that they've made it's certainly to me one of the best looking episodes probably of the entire run the fact that they were able to basically dim the lights on the bridge for the first time yeah. i i don't think the bridge looked as good until uh we went with generations you know story i mean this episode is much better than generations but the look of it hasn't come back you know for many years I think you know everybody is at the top of their game. I think you know the acting is Marvel. Patrick is great, and then Denise. I don't think you know. I think it's, in my view, it's it's certainly your best performance, Astasha. I mean, obviously, you had a lot more to play with. I mean, you know, the script is just. Uh, I mean, the the way it came together. I mean, there's stories about it, and you know, it's you know uh, the, the fact that it came together so well, and it looks so wonderful. I mean, th- there's a lot about the, this that can be said. Even the title itself mm. uh, o- almost seems like it came out of the original series. And we even get the uh, slash of light across Patrick's face in Act 4, which is something I don't think we've seen in Next Gen, and maybe never again. This is something that harkens back to the original series. 
everything works and it's just it's a wonderful hour it's a great read as a script and it's a wonderful show to watch and it's just uh, uh it's something you can watch over and over again again a bona fide classic absolutely great stuff mm -hmm. thank you very much jason oaken eve england is out in wales and she is ready to tell us how terrible this episode is how much she <laughs> hates tng right what do you think of this one I mean, where has this episode been this whole time? I mean, it's just, it was just, wow. Exactly, exactly. My exactly. words, exactly. It's, I pretty much loved everything about it. I love the sort of the claustrophobic sort of symmetry of the cinematography, the intensity of the music, which I know you've already said. I love the conflict between Picard and Riker. And I actually like this version of Picard. He wasn't the usual stuffy and pompous captain we normally <laughs> see. And instead, I just liked how he was just war weary. And actually, you know, he just came across quite troubled. And I just thought that was, was really well done by Patrick Stewart. Um, but I think you've already mentioned, actually, the main thing that I really picked out from this, though, was how meta it is and how Guinan's kind of elevated perception was sort of telling us, the audience, right from the start that something wasn't right. And... You know, it's just a brilliant alternate reality episode. And it reminded me of the Philip K. Dick book, um, A Man in a High Castle, because obviously, which is set in a sort of alternate where the Axis powers were in World War II. And in that book, you have this character who writes about a counterfactual alternate universe in book where the, the Allies win. And to me, Guinan is kind of the equivalent of that character where... You know, she, she's the only one who seems to know that there's been this shift and she is basically the narrator and our guide through this episode. So I just pretty much thought, you know, it's just so well constructed. It didn't just give us an amazing sci-fi story, but a beautifully, beautifully scripted insight into Guinan, which I think you've already said, you know, we haven't really seen very much of her so far. So I really like that. And just very quickly to finish, and I know this is repeating everything that everyone's already said. I mean, obviously, I was not expecting to see Tasha back today so that was just amazing and it was just so nice to see Tasha actually getting the send-off mm -hmm. she deserved and you know that last scene you know as you said was just such a fitting but just so emotional and I just yeah just bravo that episode is fantastic mm -hmm. great job with the no spoilers everybody Eve had no idea this is amazing really? uh, and you can get her That's slouchy really sweatshirt cool. You can get that That's slouchy so cool. sweatshirt on our Teespring store, everybody. So check that out. Seventh Rule Teespring. All right. The Dark Lord, Chris McGee, is here. What's up? What'd you think of this one? What did I think of this episode? Are you kidding? It's yeah. absolutely my top five TNG episodes. And I do agree with you, Denise. It felt like redemption for the way Tasha was written off in the series in the first season. And I think this was a way for the showrunners and the writers and everyone to say, Tasha... And more importantly, Denise deserves better. And she deserves to kiss Christopher McDonald. Well, that's, that's, that was a nice little perk. Thanks, 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 Ira. Remind me to thank Ira and, and, and Ron Moore next time. I... Um, unless I'm mistaken, uh, you know, back when this first aired, wasn't wasn't watching a whole lot of TV shows, so I could be wrong about this, but having this kind of like multiple timelines or a multiverse storytelling was still kind of a novel idea, uh, of course, typically reserved for sci-fi. Um, and, but having the, you know, at the time, mysterious guy, and she's, we still don't know a whole lot about her being the only link between the two timelines, I thought it was an excellent way to kind of give the audience some grounding and someone they can relate to like, you know, Oh my goodness, what's this doesn't seem right. What's going on. And so she echoes uh, the audience's thoughts in that case. Um, of course, I have to gush a little bit. I enjoyed all the little touches to make this timeline different visually, such as the uniforms, the lighting, the bridge layout and the set layouts and so forth. Uh, even using terminology like military log, combat date and battleship for describing the Enterprise and other facts like the Enterprise being capable of transporting 6,000 troops instead of the 1,000 plus uh, families. Um, so I'll keep this short. And as you have already noted in the previous segments, there are so many memorable quotes of the episode. And of course, everyone's favorite, my favorite as well. 
I'm not even going to repeat it because there is no way in hell I could match Sir Patrick Stewart's incredible delivery of it. So instead, I'll just let my sheet T-shirt uh, show it. Yep. Gorgeous. Mm. All right. Great stuff, Dark Lord. Thank you very much for that cool shirt. Uh, Allison Leach Hyde is also here wearing a cool shirt of her own. What did you think of this one? I love the episode. I've watched it twice in the past like 12 hours just to see it again before sitting down with you all today. And what struck me the last time that I went through it is just the the sparks flying between Tasha and Castillo are just amazing. And it makes the story so much more believable and grounded getting to just sink into that relationship with the two of them. Cause they're both in this very high energy and high stakes situation. Cause one's at war and one found themselves 22 years in the future. So like what's going on, but they're like holding on to each other and the way you Denise and, and Christopher were just truly working with each other was beautiful to watch. And my favorite line was one word. And you said it when you said, Richard, I cried <laughs> when you said his name. I was just like, Oh my God, that is so well done. Like, oh, loved it. So that's Don't make me cry again. I've cried already. <laughs> we're, we're here to make you cry. Twice. Together for you. Twice <laughs> already. I'm so red. I'm, I can't even, I look like a tomato. Oh, what are you doing? Yeah, you're beautiful. <laughs> That's that's what really struck me this time because it was just beautiful. And mm. I also love the little tweaks between uh, the the different timelines or universes. I love that Riker is an ass in this one, like truly is just an ass. I loved that. I'm like, yes, you I, I love that. So just him just butting heads with Picard the whole time. I loved that. Thought it was great. Yep. And I also really liked the music. Thought it was beautiful. So mm -hmm. I'll stop there. I'll have more for yeah. later. But there's a lot of us who got to go. So mm -hmm. great stuff and way more to talk about and things left unsaid later. But before that, check it out, everybody. Dr. Susan B. Gruner is here. What's up? What do you think of this one? Oh, I, you know, I loved it. Um yeah. I have a list a mile long. Denise, you literally light up that set with your presence. It's just amazing what you can do with even just a few words and a look. It's just amazing. This is Star Trek at its very best, the next gen. I think the show sh should be named the Denise and Whoopi show for this episode anyway. <laughs> because that <laughs> was like those, those moments that you had with Guinan uh, were just fabulous. Um, I love the difference between the old uniforms and the new uniforms, depending on your perspective or how you want to look at it. I love Worf's comment about the prune juice. <laughs> 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 and um, I love the, the, there's nothing not to love about this episode. Um, I cried that last scene when, uh, Guinan asked, um, tell, tell me about Tashiar. Um, I don't really, I could just go on and on about how great it is. I I think it deserves at least a 10, maybe a 10,000. <laughs> and uh, mm. just great, great sci-fi, great Trek. Perfect, perfecto. Mm -hmm. Just like you, Sue. Thank you very much <laughs> for that. TJ Jackson Bay out, is out in Missouri. He's going to tell us what he thinks of this episode, right? I am. I think this episode uh, is the gift uh, we receive of realizing what this show, you know, could have been with the Tasha Yar character continued uh, mm -hmm. with, you know, actual stories written for the character, uh, you know, great lines, great chemistry, you know, with the guest actors, Um and, you know, everything that that we would wish for, you know, if history was different, which is what this whole episode is about, is a different history. Uh, and, and so, you know, it gives us that as fans as well as, you know, in the story. 
Um, and so I love that. Uh, there's so much to say about this episode, but I'll just pick a couple of, of things to share now. Uh, the scene where uh, where Data and Tasha go into the lift, uh, and I, I felt so much chemistry there, even though, you know, the naked now thing, you know, didn't happen in this reality. I felt like there was a chemistry between them as, they're, as they walk in there together. Uh, and she has some things weighing on her mind. And, and now she's in this space, you know, with someone that's a friend that she talks to. Um, and, and that's what I felt in that scene. And it, it 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 was just such a touching, unsaid, you know, kind of moment, uh, just watching them walk into the lift together. Was, I, I felt feelings about that. Um, and the other thing that, that I, you know, really, really, really took away from this episode uh, was how much they were willing to sacrifice literally on a hunch. Uh, they're going to send 125 people, you know, back through this rift. They know that they're going to die just for the chance, the chance, maybe the world is better if that happened. Um, maybe they don't even know for sure. It's maybe, um, and and they're willing to do it. Everyone is on board except for Commander Riker. Uh, <laughs> but um, it, that made me think about like so many things that we can do in our own life willingly that doesn't include dying to make the world a better place. Uh, and and it doesn't have to be on a hunch, and it doesn't have to be you know just intuition. Uh, you know, we have that capability and willingness within ourselves um, to make the world a better place. So you know, I hope that other people see this episode and can take that away from it as well. I'll have more mm -hmm. later. Wow. Excellent. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. TJ Jackson Bay out in Missouri. Great stuff. All right. Faith Howell, what is up? Great scene behind you. What do you think of this one? I love this episode. Um, I will say... Um, of course, Denise is a jewel of this episode, um, and every, everybody has um, preached on that. So I will I will go a different direction. Um, my two of my favorite things, other than how gorgeous Denise was in this episode, are um, the of course the prune juice episode. I love um, all of these little touch points that we come through and that carry on for the rest of eternity. Mm -hmm. And this comes back throughout Deep Space Nine. Um, but I also love um, Rachel Garrett. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, because I was little at the time, but she was the first real female captain that we see, um, for sure the first that we see at acting as captain, not just making an appearance and interacting, you know, as a an extra character. Um, we also, she's probably the first that we actually see sacrifice in the role of captain. And I think that in my young life was so impressive that, mm -hmm. you know, women are equal in this way, in this, t this timeline, in this reality. And I think I took that, you know, part as part of my understanding of the universe. So this episode was truly impressive and, and amazing and uh, you know just incredible you're mm -hmm. incredible thanks very much for that faith howell all right the matt boardman is here matt what did you think of this episode oh well this is an amazing episode and you know just to echo what's already been said and you know it's one of those moments where just everything came together right from the directing the lighting the look having denise back is always a treat i mean we love denise right and uh and it's just uh it's just a great story this is like this is the the star trek what if mm -hmm. you know what if yeah. we didn't have that that uh that peace treaty between the klingons and the federation and uh what an what an interesting look into it um and uh, this time watching it, it it's funny that like I, I know I say this frequently, but like watching it through and and when you're watching it with a purpose and and, and trying to pick up on things that you haven't noticed before, you know we, we've uh, there's been a lot said about that that final line of of Guinan saying tell me about Tasha Yar, 
And I just had this thought at this time. It was like, this episode was the first time that we really got to know Tasha Yar. Like we had so many episodes before where she was in it or, you know, times where she should have been on a security assignment and she wasn't there. But this is like the first time that we really got kind of that like hearty, meaty meal of Tasha Yar and, and like kind of a look into the insight of who she was, you know, going to Picard and saying, you know, if I'm going to die, I want my life to have meaning. And, and, you know, and these, and, and, and Denise, you did such a, an amazing job of conveying the, the thoughts that were going through Yar's head at the time as they, you know, listening to Jordy say, well, I don't even know if, you know, we're still alive in this next timeline. And that you could just see on your face that like that, that hit Tasha at the time. So absolutely amazing episode. There's a reason, I mean, like we said, we, there's a reason it's a, well, nine, two, I mean, those people who didn't vote at the 10 are on crack, but that's, just, that goes without saying, but uh, yeah, brilliant, brilliant episode. And uh you know, it's we may not forget the name Enterprise, but we will definitely never forget yesterday's Enterprise. Yep. Natasha Yar. Thanks very much. The Matt. Justin Weir, a.k.a. Shag840. What? What is that? He was watching Jeopardy just now. He forgot that he's here. <laughs> what did you think of this episode, Justin? I, I'll keep it short. I miss you, uh, Denise, on this podcast, uh, but it's nice to see you again. Thank um, you. You guys have said everything I wanted to say about this episode. I will just say that I think this is the TNG version of the city on the edge of tomorrow from the original Enterprise. Uh, people are going to die and we have we have to let them die to for the better course of the humans. So yeah, I'll keep it at that. Great nice stuff. To see you. And great hat, Justin, by the way. Good stuff there. Great background. All right. Greg Kenzo is here. He's out in Hawaii. It's warm over there. What'd you think of this one? What's up, everybody? Um, um, you know what? It was oh, no, I'm just kidding. I loved it. I was gonna say I was gonna try to fake you out there, but I loved it. Um, just like everybody else. I'll say uh what's up to the chat pack? Could to acknowledge that we're live. This is the first live free for all, right? What's up, everybody? Um, I'll start out by saying, you know what, um, I'm sure Denise, you've gotten, you've gotten all the flowers as Sirach likes to say here today, you, you've been given the flowers and you deserve it. Honestly, like this episode, some of these past episodes haven't been drawing me in that much. And it was partly the, the directing. It was a little bit theatrical. If you look behind me, you'll see that it's kind of set up like a stage. Whereas, mm -hmm. like, we open at the most forward part of 10 forward, right? And we have, uh, let's say, Worf here, Guinan here. Yeah, and then all your oneers, like, back-to-back -back oneers. It must have been, it, it helped draw me into the story, but it must have been so hard to shoot. Like, all that complicated blocking and stuff. But, yeah, I praise you for that. Christopher McDonald started this episode as Shooter McGavin, and he ended as Lieutenant Castillo. So that that's saying something. Yep. Um, yeah. Other than that, let me say, I'll keep this short. The solo French horn accompaniment after uh, Tasha's heroic monologue. That was, it was really beautiful. It really cemented those scenes in my mind. And I really, I think we could have ended the, the show there. Honestly, I don't think I needed the battle scene, but it worked. I understand why they did it. So, yeah, let me end it there. Interesting. It was a battle scene episode. was rad too. It was. It, it was, was so but... good. Mm. All right, you know who else is rad? Say it with me. My live in Tokyo. What's up, my? What did you think of this one? Hi. Hey, Denise. So, I mean, seriously, how much did you guys cheer when the ships merged? And Picard turns around, and there's Denise. Like, yeah, she's back. That's our Denise right there. That was cool. <laughs> I dug that a lot. Um, but this episode, it makes me wonder if, if I suddenly had the chance to spend more time with someone or some people that I that I loved, would I be able to forgo that for the greater good? Would any of you? I mean, this episode really pulls at the heartstrings, and and the resolution is because Tasha Yar becomes a hero. And I I know mm. that you you mentioned that at the end of the 
the previous segment, uh, Sirach, and I agree with you. That's exactly the right word. I mean, it's it's only those people who we call heroes who can look death in the eye and know that their sacrifice is what is right for the many, regardless of the pain or, or the loss to themselves. I think that in this episode, Tasha Yar goes from being a person with a rough past to a person who's truly elevated to the pantheon of heroes. Mm. And I think that this, this script was incredible, but more than that, the looks the words that were unspoken, the haunted look in her eyes that Denise was able to conjure up from within herself were, were part of what is surely one of the, the great performances of this entire series or any Star Trek series. So for our Denise, a.k.a. Tasha Yar, as the song says, she could be a hero just for one day. Nice. <laughs> great stuff. Thank you very much. Yeah. My live in L.A., Tierney C. Diekman is also here. What's up, Tierney? What did you think of this particular episode? How can you not love this episode for everything that everyone has mentioned? The, the subtleties, the music, the performances, and the best part of this is we look up and there you are, Denise. Finally, you're, you're, you're back. Tasha's back. And you carry this episode and you look into the details and it was, there were many iterations of the writing and what they went through. And they, they spent a Thanksgiving weekend throwing this together to make it happen. And there are points in the writing that to me, uh, and this is, this is me. I apologize. You know, there are plenty of things wrong with me. Uh, I see, you know, Shooter McGavin comes on and says, you know, nobody calls me, or everybody calls me Casillo, except for my mother calls me Richard. Please call me Richard, like my mother. Uh, it's a, just you know, th things hit me a little strangely. Uh, <laughs> and and you know, the main thing, like Riker uh, in alternate Rikers are just real sassy. I won't spoil anything, but they just are. And you know what the the thing is? There's no wharf. There is no wharf to be the jelly. Uh, or the peanut butter in that bread between he and Picard or or Riker in the rest of his life. There is just no wharf to solidify that relationship. So, you know, there's there's just lots of lots of things that you can point out with this. Uh but but here is is Tasha with this uh this performance with Guinan and these little moments where she hears Jordy and you know we could all be dead in this timeline and you get these looks on your face when you when you're speaking with Guinan when you stop with Data in the hallway and it's like we see what you could be thinking what you might have been thinking from your own alternate timeline it's so wonderful and it just brings this whole episode together uh, I could watch it over and over again it absolutely deserves the rating that it does and I would just like more adventures of you on that ship with Castillo, with Captain yep. Garrett. And they should have, I, I felt too, that they could have just ended it right where that was of you, you join the ship. There's a, there's a fade to black and the episode kind of could have ended there for me. Mm -hmm. And just, just mm -hmm. let us think about it. Just, just let mm -hmm. that go on. Definitely. Great stuff, Tierney. Uh, another sassy Riker was in Parallels. That was a great one. The Klingons are trying to come after him there. Carrie Schwent, what is up? How are you, Crafty Bear? What'd you think of this one? I'm good. I'm glad I finally had a chance to wear my OG, OG sort of zip, zippered sweat, sweatshirt, and I've got my hair sort of in kind of a Tasha Yar sort of. Oh, yeah. Using hair, hairspray for the first time, and I don't even know how long. But I've got a few just sort of ran random things to sort of rapid fire through. First, first off, Ta Tasha and and Castillo. Their couple name is Yastio. <laughs> I thought Yarstio, but Yastio just sounds so, sounds so much better. And I agree with Tierney. Dude's got m potential mommy issues, but that's a discussion for a, a, la a later time. Wesley looks great in his regular, you know, red that red color really suits him and speaking of uniforms Jordy at the end is wearing the wrong one if you look closely and it also looks a little bit too big for him 
Picard's log on his computer when Tasha comes in and says she wants to switch, if you pause it on that screen, it's not words. It's all numbers. I thought at first it might be binary, but I paused it, and it's just a bunch of just random numbers in groups like they were words. So, I don't know, maybe it's some kind of code. Who knows? And one last thing before I get to my um my, my limerick was Guinan hitting on Worf there at the beginning when she was alluding that some people on the ship might not be so delicate. Uh, Those two would make an interesting yeah. couple, I think. I kind of felt like she <laughs> might potentially be hitting nice. it. Maybe it's just me. But mm -hmm. as a as the perfect segue, Guinan is I decided to make the limerick come from her point of view since she's could tell thing immediately the things were different. So I will finish with that. In the blink of an eye, everything changed. It all seems correct and yet feels so strange. We should not have to fight. I must see things set right. The wrong history must be erased. Now, I'm not into prune juice, so I will go with my own warrior drink and have my cranberry juice. Good enough. Take it. Whoa. Now, Homer Frizzell is into prune juice, I'll have you know. He likes it to be in sparkling water beverages. Yeah. What do you think of this episode? <laughs> yeah, it has to be mixed with a little bit of seltzer. It's palatable <laughs> that way. So I love the episode. I'll just be really quick. My lighting is different today because of the episode. They went with a lot of under lighting and they went with some blues and they went with some whites and i think everyone has sort of touched on the lighting it created that mood and feel and it was awesome it was great denise congratulations you should be very very proud about it i wow. loved it it's better than i remembered thank you wow, <laughs> wow. don't right, read what homer. tj just said in the zoom chat <laughs> uh <laughs> great stuff homer great lighting oh. i love it Thank you very much uh, for that. And welcome back. Uh, I'll Dr. talk to Ann you Marie. later. Dr. <laughs> Anne-Marie Siegel is here. <laughs> what is up, Anne-Marie? Thank you for your patience. What did you think of this episode? I mean, obviously it's amazing. I mean, it feels like the last TNG movie because it's also directed by David Carson who goes on to direct Generations. Mm -hmm. So it really does feel so cinematic and special and so much, so much brain power went into it and all the actors, but it's just... Um, Tasha Yar was such a family favorite, and the second we all saw Skin of Evil, um, every week after that, we'd always say, we miss Tasha Yar. And then this episode came on, and, it, and I was like five and a half, and I just remember like not totally understanding it. It's so star like dark and chilling, but then Tasha Yar's there, and we were like cheering, and it was such a special mm -hmm. moment, um, and it's just so special to have you here to review it. Thank you oh. so much. Wow. Love that. Yeah. All right. Well, Sirach and Denise, any final thoughts on that? That was touching. That was fun. Any final thoughts on this episode? Phew. Wow. Yeah. You guys are stunning and leave me um, so full. Um, you know, again, <clears throat> to share with you, I, I haven't seen the episode since it first aired. <clears throat> so forgive me, I I picked up a little something in Atlanta last week. Um, I was so pleased to watch this. And, you know, <clears throat> as I was saying to Ryan and, and Sirach, I, I have I have a great memory of this episode. Um, it was it came as in as such a gift. And a surprise, a total surprise. There was no, there was no um, uh, tease that this would happen, or no suggestion that this would ever happen. When I left after Skin of Evil, that was it. And out of the blue, I get a call to do this episode, and um, it 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 righted the ship so well for me. It did. It solved so much. It created um, a chance for me to really take this character and and um, and express her in a way that I had tried to and was fighting to and wanted to and knew was there 
and never had the chance to or the opportunity to. So along comes this incredible script, this beautiful script that creates um, so many layers for this character. And I just dove in and without, without, without a, a care, you know, I, I, I had played Tasha Yar, but I hadn't played the character in a couple of years and I just dove in and, and she was there waiting. It's mm -hmm. like I opened, I opened my trailer door and she said, come, come, come in. Let's do this. Let's, let's, let's tell her story in a way we always tried and wanted to. And now we have a chance. So it was like this extraordinary opportunity. I mean, when you think about it, you think about TV shows and people that, you know, characters that die on TV shows, a couple years later, they don't suddenly come back and are no. able to like fix it. This was like a fix it for me. Mm -hmm. So it, I, I was, I was telling Sir Rock and Ryan, can you imagine if Skin of Evil happened and end of story? And, you know, the, the show would have gone on and everything, you know, as, as you're watching, but how how um unsatisfying how unsatisfying that would have been that would have been to the fans that would have been to star trek that certainly would have been to me so this was this amazing chance and opportunity so again i have a memory of that but as we were talking about memories <clears throat> are not exact and they're not fixed. And so I now saw this episode here 35 years later for the first time and from where I am now and <clears throat> hoping or just open, wide-eyed, is this what I remember it to be or is it as good as I thought it was or is it, does it live up to what people always talk about yesterday's enterprise, how fans love yesterday's enterprise? And can I be, can I be objective? And it was so wonderful to watch it. It exceeded my memories. It was just, I enjoy, the episode was so well written and so good and so engaging. And um, I caught all these little little pieces that um, I, I had forgotten about. And, and, but again, you, you don't act alone. Um, Christopher McDonald was an extraordinary um, gift to have as my, my co-star, as my Lieutenant Castillo. He will, um, uh, he is a friend. Um, we've done other projects together and um, he's, he, he and I, clicked we just had that chemistry you that's either there or not and um he made it so easy for me it, i didn't know what to expect it was it was interesting to come back to a set now let me preface this by i had not seen anybody on the show i had not seen any of the cast since i left i had done other work i was in key west doing a show, I'd done Pet Cemetery. I was all over the place. I wasn't doing cons, or if I was, they, you know, nobody was there. So I really hadn't seen the cast or been in touch with anybody until that day I walked on to yesterday's Enterprise. So it was, it was, I wasn't sure what it, you know, to expect. It, 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 it wasn't, I have to be honest, it wasn't like everybody ran up to me and welcomed me back like like old friends. Um, it it was they were they were on doing their thing. I I didn't really work. I only worked with Patrick, um, really. And the rest of the stuff was was with Chris and um, and Whoopi now, which was which was perfect because um, 
we had never worked together before. We had known each other. We had met socially, but we had never worked together. So it was, it was as if I wasn't really on that show that I had been on. I was a new sh- on a new show. I was mm-hmm. on, I was, I was on my Star Trek. I was on my Star. I was calling the shots here. So it was a very interesting experience and unique, very unique to have as an actor. You don't generally have that happen. I mean, I don't know if it ever happens, you know, rare, rare, rare. So this episode will and continues even now more so having experienced it with you guys and watching it just now really lives in my heart as a perfect, having just come from Valentine's Day, a beautiful Valentine Aww. to this character. Yeah. To me. yeah. Absolutely. Uh, Rock, <clears throat> final thoughts? Jake's final take, I should say. Um, Just, Denise, you are amazing. Um, Tasha Yar is so nice. They had to kill her twice. Oh. Um. <laughs> Third time's the charm, baby. So that. <laughs> oh. that's it. I, I really enjoyed it. It was uh, beyond the expectations from beginning to end. Just really couldn't find any flaws in it. And you know, you're sitting there, you're just eating every scene up, not knowing what's going to happen. I mean, we know everything's going to go back to normal at the end, but. It's the way it went back to normal. It gave us some peace. It gave us some closure. It gave us some resolution. And and it also showed the courage that Tasha has. It shows, you know, when you mentioned the end, how you didn't like the sound of a senseless death, you know. I didn't like the sound of that. And I thought, yeah, you know what? I don't think any of us liked the sound of that. I don't think any of us sat well with the way Tasha gets blobbed up by a tar tar blob you know and so <laughs> and you know i think they could have actually my last thing is they could have recycled this kind of a theme in my opinion with with dax's character because i felt like dax could have had a better send off mm-hmm. as well after de- dedicating six six years of her life to deep space nine i felt like her closure wasn't proper for mm-hmm. the amount of work she put in and who her character is and so you know sometimes they get it wrong in this chan in this case they actually made up for it so kudos to the writers for you know saying hey you know what we got that wrong let's try to fix that and it's very rare that people admit to their mistakes and try to correct those mistakes so um grateful for that we we all benefit because they did that so uh, kudos to the writers and 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 the acting. Everybody brought a plus performance to me. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. I thought Patrick was probably the best I've seen in in this episode. I it was he was so good. Um, you know, like when he says, "What's the matter with this bridge?" You know, he's he's, he's asking Guy and like, "What are you what, what are you talking about?" He's trying to figure it out. At, you know, and and really have to. That's the other thing. The leap of faith that's in this episode. There's a. This is about a leap of faith. This is about trusting. Um, and you have to know your crew and your personnel in order to make those kinds of trustful decisions. That's another good mm-hmm. character developing thing that they did for Picard, that he has that kind of faith, that he, he trusts his his crew, and he's going to go with Guyna's gut feeling. Another thing that puts a notch on Picard's belt and makes him you know, perceptively a better captain than, than he, he went into this episode. So um, that's my final take. Mm-hmm. Uh, great stuff. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you to Melissa, Jason, Eve, Chris, Allison, Sue, TJ, Faith, Matt, Justin, Greg, Mai, Tierney, Carrie, and Homer. Thank you all very much for joining us, everybody at home. Uh, Hey, we could talk about this one forever, and we will on the other side and things left unsaid. But thank you all for joining us. We really appreciate it. And until next time, always remember the seventh rule. Hey, what's going on? We've got...
we're supposed to have a uh, another panel starting right now, but it looks like they're starting on a different. Yeah, it was hard to find. Because the mm. the one that they've got is right here. Look, and it's right. not going. No, but they're on the Roddenberry Entertainment channel, so you have to actually go to the channel and find it there. Uh, yeah, we've been waiting on this one here. Okay, well, let's see if we can find it. For everybody in the live chat, hang on. We're going to find it for you right now. So you go to Roddenberry Entertainment. Looks like they just, looks like they must have had some kind of technical difficulties. Just go to the Roddenberry Entertainment channel. Roddenberry Entertainment. Type that into YouTube. Click on that. And there they are. Uh, oh, Great. we're still live. I had... So we will, <laughs> I'm going to send this right That's now cool. in the live chat, everybody, um, so that you can go there directly. Next video. There we go. I'm also going to put it in the previous thing that was the old link. My, there we go. You know how much I love David Bowie. Oh my God. Oh, yeah. 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 All right. And everybody in the live chat, we'll see you later. We're leaving live. Go hop You're over here to for the a new link longer, that we just right? found. Yeah. yeah. For a couple of days. I'm tomorrow okay. night. I'm about, tomorrow night. I'm going to the kibitz room to watch Tim Russ, and then I'll be here till mm. the twentieth. Okay, good. I'll be in touch. Cool. Um, you guys. That's it. We're not live anymore, guys. We did it. I'm gonna. I'm gonna see some of you on the uh, 